Now, coming up very soon, Chef Mark will be cooking his Indian spiced lamb. Now to travel. And Debbie's back in the Harvey Norman Lounge along with curator of the Graffiato Topol Street Art Festival, Ross Liu. Good morning to you both. Morning. morning. Oh, really nice to have you in the studio. So we're talking Topol. Ross, you've been involved in the Street Art Festival since it started seven years ago. What exactly is it? Yeah, no, it did. It started in 2011 and essentially it's a number of different things, but it's a platform for artists to show what they're capable of when it comes to painting big walls. Yeah. Um, but it's also a really cool opportunity for spectators or public or audience to see what actually goes into creating something like that and maybe get a little bit of insight into the people who, who do it. Wow, so Debbie, you went out to Topo to check it all out? Yeah, we did. I mean, Topo is the home of the Street Art Festival. It's the very first one held in New Zealand there. And it's developed into this really exciting, cool festival to take part in. So we went down and had a look, so check it out. Topo is best known for its water. The Hooker Falls, where 200,000 litres of water barrels through this canyon every second. And the Great Lake, New Zealand's largest. But it's the back street art that's now in the spotlight. And after breakfast at the storehouse, we check out the walls nearby. We've got a walking map that you can download and print off, or, or we, we hand out at the weekend. And it just shows where the old pieces are and where, where the new pieces are happening. So you can, it's over three days, and you can just walk around and seeing the, see them being developed. These gems are off the beaten path, tucked into alleyways and in car parks. It does beautify some, yeah. some back alleys and, and sometimes you don't realise just uh, the quality of artwork that we have. We've got some of New Zealand's biggest street artists. Artists like Sinza, Mr G and local part-timer Tane, who meets me for lunch at Replete. He's responsible for that Richie McCaw mural, the one that got everyone talking ahead of the 2015 Rugby World Cup. Richie McCaw, I, you know, it was a good time of year that, that I'd done that and we all thought he was a warrior. Before we knew the outcome, I, I um, wanted to paint Richie anyway and a bit of a tribute to him and, and the team, but you know, I didn't have time to paint the whole team. Tane is using the wall behind a mate's workshop to practice his art ahead of Graffiato. A massive moa eating eagle, the hekioi, a nod to New Zealand's history. Trying to paint images to make the public aware of what we had in our country and maybe make people more aware of what we have in our country and endangered wildlife. He's becoming a little bit of a local legend um, for his street artwork. He's a very unassuming person, so he's willing to work with different business owners to create a piece that works for them. Um, if you look at this piece, it's got a beautiful moor pork in it. Now, Tane, over the years, has become quite the environmentalist, and so I know it was really important for him to show a bit of his favorite aspects of nature in this piece of work. 10 artists will be painting nine walls this year. Some work off detailed plans, others freestyle, and even organizers are kept in the dark. The artists can paint whatever they like. Because the artists haven't been commissioned, and they're coming down here doing their works for free, um, part of the joy is that they can paint whatever they want on the walls. Now we do give them a little bit of guidelines, so nothing dark, nothing inappropriate for children, but from that, it's up to them to paint what they like. I do have a couple of favourites. I love the Kekapo, which we'll show you later. Um, I was involved, well, I helped um, Siren paint his beautiful dog called Bumblebee. You helped? Well, well, I painted the black wall, which is pretty exciting, but mostly I was just sort of uh, volunteering, keeping away um, traffic, that kind of thing, just being his general <laughs> helper. So when you're involved and you know the backstory of a piece, it really, you know, you feel, you feel linked to it. This uh, man from Auckland came down and he was just blown away by the art that we've got and he, she hadn't really, sometimes when you're so busy you're going to A to B, you don't necessarily look up and see it. And he was saying to her, you've got amazing work here with incredible artists. But it's not just out of towners who are impressed by the jumbo sized art. For locals it's given once forgotten parts of town a new lease on life. You hear about people walking down an alleyway now compared to beforehand. They they wouldn't walk down the alleyway. Yeah, I think Graffiato is doing a good job. 
home for the night, Boulevard Waters, where we exchange the beauty on the walls for the tranquility of Lake Taupo. This boutique apartment block sits right on the water, so the sounds of waves lapping and ducks quacking will drift into your room right through the night. Wow, what a great place to stay. And the art looks amazing, Debbie. Yeah, this is really top quality local and international artists. And uh, by the way, Richie McCaw, open invitation. Go to Taupo and sign that mural. Tane would love it if you did. And the local youth would love it as well. He reckons you'd be a real inspiration. It would be go. very cool, wouldn't it? Imagine yeah. getting the photo of Richie in front of the mural as well. Mm -hmm. um, Ross, as an artist, is it difficult to, to work in those sort of big canvases, so to speak? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, most people, if they uh, arrive in town, with their sketch, it's like an A4. <laughs> so they've just got to translate the A4 up to whatever it be, 30 metres by 6 metres. I mean, that's hard, but I think probably the harder part is the fact that you're just working outside for three days. So if it rains, you get wet. If it blows from the south, you get cold. And then um, the fact that, you know, a lot of artists like to work in their studio with the privacy, but this is very, very public. So you're under people walking past and scrutiny, there. yeah. Mm. And interaction, you know, conversation. And I guess the weather will also affect things as well, wouldn't it? With if you've got rain coming sort of, you know, <laughs> diagonally at you. Yeah, if you're lucky, when it's raining, you're lucky if it comes on an angle and you're on the right side of the building, so you stay dry. But if you're unlucky, you just, yeah, you get wet. You get wet. Are you excited wet. by the artists coming this year? Yeah, really excited. We've got six out of the ten are debutantes. They've never been to Graffiato before, so always really excited by people coming and having the experience for the first time and the fact that Topol will have a new uh, representation of artists that hasn't isn't there at the moment. So oh, awesome. yeah, just build the build the collection. It's gonna be fun, but well, it's been great chatting to you both. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, Graffiato Topol Street Art Festival is on over Labour Weekend and of course it's a festival that keeps on building because you've got last year's and last year's and the years before so you're going to have all these incredible works. You can go to the website for more information and to download that walking tour too of the street art.